Right. Um, hello, my name is Thomas, and uh, welcome to our presentation on our product, uh, BodyMap, which I'll be giving you today uh, together with my colleague, uh, Lucas. Hello, guys. All right, um, I'll start with a few words about our company and product. Uh, we are medical augmented intelligence. Uh, we're a startup uh, concentrating on uh, VR educational apps, and our main product is BodyMap, which is a VR anatomy training app. And we also have AccuMap, which is for acupuncture training, which is built on top of BodyMap. But uh, today we're talking about the technical stuff. So that's going to be, that is shared between both of them. So we're only going to be talking about anatomy. So uh, to get to the technology stack, uh, our app is based on Unreal Engine 4, which is a great tool for creating multi-platform, multiplayer games. And uh, we are targeting standalone headsets, uh, standalone VR headsets, such as uh, Oculus Quest. And uh, so that places uh, pretty heavy uh, performance requirements on, uh, on our app. And uh, our, our use case is also very specific with, uh, with anatomy, with our body being composed of roughly 5,000 separate meshes, which does place uh, a, a specific set of constraints on our app, which I'll go into more detail right now. So the first thing that we do for uh, to make the hurdle of displaying so many meshes uh, a little bit easier on the hardware is using inverse world movement, which means that uh, in, whenever the player wants to move the body or rotate it or scale it, instead we move the player and some uh, other meshes that are supposed to look static, such as the floor, in uh, the opposite direction. So whenever the player would like to move the body up, we instead move the player and the floor down, and this creates the illusion of the body moving up while the player actually stays, uh, while the body stays station stationary. And this uh, has a considerable performance advantage because moving uh, 5,000 meshes uh, every tick is actually pretty expensive. It does cost resources to update all the transforms and it does shave off about half a millisecond, which when targeting uh, 90 frames per second is a lot. Um, a second advantage of this is that uh, because we know that the body is always in one spot, uh, it simplifies a lot of our code uh, because we can always assume that the body is in this one world position. So it does simplify uh, our transformation calculations and some graphical effects. And a uh, final, final advantage is in multiplayer where we found that moving the body for all players, uh, one uh, player who has the authority to move it, is distracting and uncomfortable to the other ones who cannot move the body. And so instead, users are free to explore the body at their own uh, relative location. And uh, when they try to move the body, only their multiplayer avatar that the other players see is moved. But for all the other players, the body stays where they want it. Uh, next, I'll just quickly, uh, shortly touch on hyperlinks. That's uh, our another important feature, uh, which for each body part, we have a detailed description with uh, text and labels on the body parts, but also hyperlinks, which uh, allows uh, the, the body part to link other structures that are associated with it. For example, a bone has a link to all the muscles that are attached to it, or an internal organ has links to all the vessels providing blood to the organ. And uh, this allows the user to traverse the body in a natural way, uh, linking, like hyperlink clicking one by one, uh, while only having the important uh, relevant body parts in focus. Okay, uh, Thomas touched uh, upon the movement in uh, the multiplayer environment previously a little bit. Um, our main feature that uh, brings a lot to our products is virtual classrooms. Um, those allows, uh, they allow uh, to the players actually experience uh, the um, learning in a, a traditional way uh, using 
a literally a lecturer or a teacher and a set of students uh, and they can be literally anywhere uh, on the world they don't have to be in the same facility uh, and we basically harvested and uh, matched the concept of traditional multiplayer from games to uh, our use case uh, the users they want hands-on experience they want to touch and be able to see what the teacher is doing as close as they can and uh, we provide them with a set of features that um, uh, they can see everything the teacher is doing and the teacher can also influence what the users can actually do so they won't be able to just go around the body and completely dismantle it while he's trying to um, well, explain some concept and everything that he does will be seen by them every single ui interaction um, interaction with the body he can take every single muscle and tear it apart or move the body around and every single student will see that uh, the students are also allowed to communicate with uh, others using voice chat and everything's influenced using the user management the pre uh, privileges that uh, the teacher can set up they can give users right to talk uh, they can also be given the right to modify the body or uh, access the UI. Uh, it's a really low friction environment. You, there's nothing really complicated for the users to start using multiplayer. Uh, the teacher can just go through the main menu and open up a new server instance, join it, and it will be visible to others. Uh, this is really important because traditionally the multiplayer in games was uh, kind of um, hard to set up but today modern concepts are really different and uh, we are up to that standards we also come uh, with a new concept for our film for in the future and we want to implement a uh, recording and replay of the lessons so the teachers would be able to um, record the lesson once for some set of students and if somebody missed the lesson he would be able to experience it in the same um, extent afterwards uh, the voice will be recorded the changes in the body structure and everything the users did around would be recorded so uh, the experience would be really authentic uh, one of our really uh, technically interesting features is masking um, we can basically inspect the body uh, from the surface down and uh, if the user wants uh, to grab something which is uh, really deep in the body or see it interact with it in, in some way um, he would have to just stick his hand inside and just try to access the organ or something but that's that can be really complicated masking allows you to just hide whole portion of the body and access those parts straight away and see them uh, it comes up with a technological challenge because uh, when it comes to hiding parts of the body we are basically cutting up meshes uh, and those meshes uh, we are using uh, opacity masking in uh, from unreal engine 4 which basically just marks part of the mesh as not visible so you will be able to see inside if you have a bone and the models they have only just the surface and you can see actually inside there it's not really natural it's something that the user wouldn't like to see probably and it's not really nice so we need to cover up that and the masking feature actually comes up with some choices that we had to do along the way uh, we had an opportunity to try uh, the procedural uh, generation of the geometry so that's uh, sometimes used in games where you have to slice an object uh, you slice it you generate procedural geometry for both of the parts of the mesh and they can live happily ever after in the world and just bounce around so they are completely new meshes uh, we cannot do that uh, because it's really expensive and we are moving the plane in and out of the body um, every frame so uh, you can just grab the grab grab the plane and just move it around and you will see the result this would prove every single frame regenerate the meshes which is not really suitable for us so we picked up a different approach that uh, that's basically hiding the crimes 
It's just uh, projecting a texture onto a plane, uh, which covers up the holes uh, with a properly aligned textures. And that's done using a separate render pass, which has to be done during the frame. And it basically just takes the mesh, it renders it from the inside out, and uh, it marks every single in-facing edge, every single in-facing face uh, with an ID of the mesh, and every out-facing face with a zero, which uh, helps us basically in a way that uh, we are using the depth buffer to uh, generate us a map that's uh, showing us where is the hole and covering up something that should be covered because if you would be rendering just wall mesh that's enclosed it would be like wall zero and there wouldn't be any id if you would be just must rendering something that's cut in half there would be just the inside rendered with the id of the texture and that's something that we want we just basically i uh, use the orthogonal projection and render the scene from the view of the plane using that technique you can see it uh, up there on uh, on the slide where there's the skull that's basically the effect we are going for and uh because uh, it's not it's not perspective projection we get really accurate results uh, when it comes uh, to the results there are some artifacts um the, they usually come up with uh, some kind of in some form of noise you can see it on uh, the bottom right side there's an example of the noise on uh, like really uh, sharp edges um, or uh, some misplaced normals that's on the bottom side there's like really straight line that's like one misplaced normal which ended up causing the artifact um, we are dealing with that using a post-processing method that multi-samples the texture that we are producing and um, just tries to hide up all of these artifacts. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it produces nice results. In some cases, it's not the best thing to do. And there's some more magic involved to uh, handle that. Uh, when we have this texture ready, we basically use it to uh, sample our texture atlas and place the proper texture in place of the texture ID. And use this texture for the plane that you see on the top uh, in the video basically um there's there's the texture on the plane and on the bottom left side there's the texture id rendered on the top right there's one one more problem that you can also uh, that's also like common with uh, this approach and that's uh, aliasing of the textures because you're basically not using geometry for rendering of uh, the edges of the mesh you're using texture and the texture is not really getting um, any uh, anti-aliasing at, at all you have to deal with that manually or uh, just use a bigger texture and make it more dense so it's not that upfront in the user so that's something we are trying to account for when we are rendering the plane and uh, trying to come up with a solution that's uh, best for the user. Okay, guys, that's about our presentation. It's rather short. All right, thank you. Thank you for your attention. And uh, it was short, but informative, I hope. And uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer any of your questions in the Q&A. We have a lot more features in our products, and it will be really nice to share them all. But yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>